Welcome. This bunch of ancient remains in Greece might not, at first, seem particularly important. <laughs> but once upon a time, it was a thriving city, home to kings and mythical gods, where people would gather to discuss affairs like philosophy, maths and history. It is called Acropolis of Athens and it is one of the most famous ancient archaeological sites in the world. The term Acropolis means high city in Greek, and there are many of them all over Greece, but this one is the most known. It is made of limestone rock that dates to the period when dinosaurs still roamed the earth, and it is built on a rocky hill which has an extensive flat top, perfect to build a city. We don't know exactly when the citadel was born. It is believed that the hill was already inhabited during the Neolithic era, and that a Mycenaean palace stood here during the Late Bronze Age. But the city reached its peak in the Archaic period, when the Athenians, empowered from their victory over the Persians, carried out an ambitious building program under the leadership of the great statesman Pericles. Determined to bring the Acropolis to a level of splendor not seen before, Pericles initiated a massive building project that lasted 50 years. Under his direction, two well-known architects, Callicrates and Nictinus, and the sculptor Phidias, transformed the rocky hill into a unique monument of art dedicated to Athena, goddess of wisdom and war. This period is known as the Golden Age of Athens, and the citadel became a center of culture, a place where education, art, philosophy, and architecture flourished. It was during this period that many of Greece's most influential writers and thinkers lived, like the physician Hippocrates, the philosophers Plato and Socrates, and the playwrights Sophocles and Euripides. Athenians were very religious, they considered the gods as their helpers and supporters. In fact, many buildings in the Acropolis were dedicated to them, and in particular to Athena, who was considered the patron goddess of the city. Let's have a look at some of the most important monuments. The Propylia was a monumental entryway to the Acropolis. It included a central building and two wings covered with elaborately painted panels. Next to the Propylia, there was a gigantic bronze statue of Athena, called Athena Promarchos. This is the Parthenon. It is an enormous Doric-style marble temple that remains the star attraction of the Acropolis. It was of course dedicated to Athena. The Temple of Athena Nike is a small Ionic-style temple, dedicated to Athena and in particular Nike, the goddess of victory. This is the Erectine, another marble temple which honored Athena and several other gods and heroes. It's best known for its porch supported by six caryatid maiden statues. On the slope of the Acropolis lies the majestic Odeon of Herodes Atticus, which was a theater that could host up to 5,000 people. It is still used today for cultural events. All these monuments, just like most of the ancient Greek architecture and sculpture, are now white. However the ancient Greeks loved color, and their statues and temples were once decorated with colorful designs. So, when we think of the Acropolis and its monuments, we need to imagine a place full of color and beauty. The Acropolis is a place of great historical and cultural significance, and it is a must-visit destination for anyone interested in the history of Western civilization. On this hill were born democracy, philosophy, theater, freedom of expression and speech, which provide to this day the intellectual and spiritual foundation for the contemporary world. It has withstood bombardment, massive earthquakes and vandalism, yet still stands as a reminder of the rich history of Greece. Today, it is a cultural UNESCO World Heritage Site, and the most striking and complete ancient Greek monumental complex still existing in our times. So, did you enjoy this video? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel.